meetup that you can meet right now. Uh, see some new faces. We haven't had a meetup since November. So we are back on track now. We usually do one every month. If you're new, we do one every month. Last Monday of every month. Uh, join the group. Definitely let people know. We're always looking for speakers about anything WordPress related. Um, technical stuff, coding, general setup stuff. Uh, we've had a lot of kind of intro uh, presentations recently, themes and plugins. So we'd, we'd like to have either high level business application things or coder specific, you know, development showing code on the screen and things like that. Um, send any ideas, any suggestions you have, and thank you for joining. Peter. Hi, uh, my name's Peter Ritchie. As you can probably tell I'm not from here, I'm from uh, Australia. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about what we're doing um, and, and a little, little bit of history of the company that I'm involved with. I'll try and speak slowly so you can all understand me. Um, in 1997, I started a company called Agent Point, and the reason behind it was uh, I started in a, in, a, um, in a state in Australia called Tasmania. Um, and the reason behind it was I wanted to have um, a web development company, but I also wanted to specialise in one area, and that was real estate. I didn't want to have a web development company, I just have my, my doors open to everyone. I thought real estate was good because, well, in Australia, real estate agents have money, um, and a lot, usually lots of it. So I thought well, specialising in an area, um, uh, in an industry that was going to move very quickly to the web and would spend the money to be on there um, and specialising in that area would be a good thing. So what we did originally was basically um, the first website we did we, uh, was a company called EIS Property and what they wanted was they wanted a, 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 uh, a real estate website and they said well but we also want our listings um, stored in a database and then we want those listings to be able to be propagated to other websites, so we only want to list it once. And so I sort of had a bit of an idea, I thought, well, if I, I've got, I got some reasonable money from this guy, so what I'll do is I'll build a system, um, I'll get somebody else to build it, because I'm not a developer myself, um, and we'll build a system and then we'll sell it to other agents, so we won't just want, you know, so I won't really make much money out of this, but this is, and so that set me on this path. So what we started doing was, we started um, building applications. So the first application we had, was a thing called um, AgentLog. Um, now, basically, you can see this is a this is a this is the current system that we that we've got at the moment. We're moving across from the new one. I'll tell you about in a sec. But basically, I wanted a really simple system where real estate agents could manage their manage their listings. This system here is about the fourth or fifth iteration of the original one, and this is building Ruby on Rails. Okay, I pulled on Ruby on Rails. So basically. What this system does is it allows a real estate agent to log in, manage their property listings um, in one location, um, and then have those listings exported to a number of real estate sites. In Australia, there's probably around about two major ones and about 10, you know, um, 10, other, 10 other minor players. So basically, to set up a real estate agent, all they have to do is put in their real estate agent's details, and then put in their office details, and then put their team members up, and then give them access, and they can start adding listings. From that, we decided to, to start building um, our real estate websites off that. But what happened was, over the years, we ran into problems where we were getting other web developers saying, oh look, you know, I've got this client of mine who wants to build a website, but you know, it's going to take me too long to build a system. Uh, is there any chance we can use your system? And this system wasn't built for that. It was built for our in-house developers only, and they knew there was no real documentation for it. It wasn't built in a way that was easy for other web developers to get in there and, and learn. So we found that every time we did that, it ended up costing us so much time and effort for our developers spending time helping these other guys do things. Okay, so what we decided to do was start a new company. And, I, and, and two years ago, um, two years ago, we we said, well, look, we were getting all these developers wanting to build real estate websites with us. Um, Let's build a system specifically for developers or real estate agents within house developers. So what set us about was um, what set us about with Zoo Property, and what we thought we'd do was we we develop two systems. Um, the first layer being a, a development system for web developers, and the second layer being an agent system for real estate agents. So what we have now is we have a system where um, web developers can sign up to the system. And then they can basically set up their, their web development company within the system. 
And then what they can do is they can start adding their clients to the system. Now, a problem we were going to have with doing it that way was that if we, if we do that, we have to make it pretty cheap for the developer because the developer is going to have to make money on top of that and they're going to have to make um, you know, hosting and support and all that sort of stuff. So what we decided to do was basically set a fee of say around about 29 US dollars per month for the developer for each office that they add to the system. So if they add 10, if they sign an, an agency with 10 offices, it'll cost them 290 US dollars a month. And then they'll bill the agent for support and hosting. In Australia, we've got all of our clients now using this. We've been demoing this for about a year ourselves, like uh, beta testing it. We've got about 125 agents now using it. Um, and what we do is we charge, Zoo Property charges my other company, Agent Point, and then we charge um, the client. And in, in Australia, we charge about $220 per month per office. So there's a pretty good margin in that for, for, for Agent Point as a test case developer. So, what we did was, um, we've done it that way. Now we've got about 60, 60 web developers now trialling it as well. And you know, there's a lot of feedback and it's, there's a lot of effort going into getting it, getting it up to, to get it out of the beta stage. We can actually start charging. At the moment, we don't charge any fees for any offices to other web developers. It's just free until we find out all the bugs. So, um, so from there, I'll just give you a quick snapshot of the Zoo system and I'll get to WordPress in a second. But, uh, so this is, that's basically a sign up where you can get, each, each developer gets their own subdomain. Um, we decided to not name the, the system for developers. Um, you'll see, uh, you'll see that, um, that you can pick your, you, you see at the top it's called agent account. The reason for that is we wanted an unbranded system for developers so that, you know, the, the, the client didn't see, oh, this is who property is. They can, so they can brand it themselves, just put their logo in there and all that sort of stuff. Um, so basically you can get your own URL, so for instance it might be abc.agentaccount.com. So this is basically, um, this is one of the developers, um, and this is basically um, a system for, um, for, for, the, for that developer. And you see you've got a dashboard which has got basically, you know, all the latest information. You can, you can as a developer you can send um, messages, uh, to, to Zoo Property, you can you can receive messages from your clients um, from from their system. You can add new clients. You can see there's a couple of test accounts there. Basically, um, as a developer, you can you're basically managing all of your clients. And then what you do is you get to once you've added your clients, you get to their system, which is basically where they can manage all of their listings. We've also uh, if, you, if I scroll down here, I'll show you. We'll also have. Um, you can see that there's listing management. There's also social integration like the Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, we'll be adding a few others as we go. But basically, um, it allows uh, the uh, web developers to um, give their clients access through their own account um, and, and their own branded site. There's not really any branding on it at all. All the help documentation just refers to the system. Um, it doesn't refer to Zoo Property at all. So, that's where we are at with, um, with the systems. Now, um, in 2004, I first started, 2004-2005, uh, first started with WordPress. Um, and originally we toyed with the idea of uh, building a standalone real estate website without any system. Um, and we built a number of real estate websites, but we ran into a few problems. Back then it was in its infancy. Um, it wasn't as evolved as it is now. Um, and by 2007, we decided that you know it, uh, WordPress's uh, its strength is on the actual um, the front end of the website, on blogging and all that sort of stuff. And it was it was going to be too much of a burden to have every single agent have their own listing management system within WordPress. So we decided that's where we went with Zoo. So Zoo handles all the property listings, all the team members, but WordPress handles the rest. So. Our, thought from, our thoughts from there was uh, how are we going to engage uh, WordPress developers. Um, one thing that I've learned, um, I don't know how many, how many of you here are web developers, actual, actually developers yourselves. Okay, so one thing I learned um, as a web developer doing uh, a lot of sites is that you know you, you might get paid five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars for a job, but sometimes you don't make money out of that. You know, so it's sort of um, I wanted to get away from actually doing the real, the, the actual websites and concentrate on the business on the systems. 
and try to engage web developers to use our systems. Um, so what we decided to do was um, we went down the track and started building some real estate websites. Um, and from that we thought, well, we're going to have to have some plugins that work with Zoo Proper. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be releasing these plugins uh, free, open to the community. They'll obviously only work with Zoo Property, but I mean, if you wanted to re-engineer yourself to work with whatever you wanted to, you probably could. Um, but we wanted to release a range of plugins. Now, if people are going to pay money for a website, they're going to have to have something pretty nice. So what we decided to do was, um, was to develop um, some simple things like, this is, a, this is a theme that's ready to go with, uh, with, with Zoo Property and WordPress. This is a WordPress theme. Um, it's, you know, we think, you've got to think about what a real estate agent needs on their websites. You know, in America, they've got, they've got their own listings, but they also have their MLS listings. So, um, what, we, what you need is you need to have uh, featured listings, recent listings, things that they can sell to their vendors. Um, you have to have search facilities, you have to have tools for mortgage calculators and, and, um, and the like. Uh, then you have to have your blogging component and all that sort of stuff. So, what we did decide to do was build some test case themes that we're going to basically um, we sell at the moment in yeah, Australia. Is this linked into your database listing database? Yeah, it's through. It's through. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. It's through an API. Um, but yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and so what happens is basically when you set up uh, WordPress, this this website, if you have, if you've got a, a client with all their listings in the system, this website should take you around about. If you want to, let's, let's take away the branding, but it should take you two hours to set up the whole website. And then if you want to do the branding, obviously a day, two days, however long you, 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 know, you spend on, uh, on the branding. What we do is we try to make it as, um, as versatile as possible. So basically you'll see the buttons, all the links, all that. We've already got the, the system where you can just do a colour picker for the, for the colour codes. If we use the, um, for, all the, for all the fonts, all the, the um, H1, H2, H3, all that sort of stuff. Um, even the menu items, you can change the colours just, right, just by ticking the button. Um, so basically we wanted to have that as a test case to say, oh, here it is, this is what we can do, and then the developers go out there and do what they want. What we found is that this system has cost us probably double what we originally thought it was going to cost us. And so at the moment we're selling those themes for about $2,000 um, each one in Australia. And we do that like, like that. In Australia the average agent would spend between ten and $20,000 on a website. Um, here you can say between two and five maybe, uh, a little bit different. Um, so yeah, so we've got a, a, a basic theme now. I'm not sure if I'm, am I connected, James? Um, I think I've got to put a code in there, right? Connect to the I should announce this. Sorry, connect to the Cambridge network. Yep. And use the event code B P V B B P. Yeah, two two two. Should be able to. So let's jump back here. Um, you can see from the menu there um, that the actual system for we didn't want to have a system that just catered for residential and commercial listings. We wanted to have projects, we wanted to have business listings um, uh, and, and the like. So basically holiday accommodation, everything. Um, tools. Let's just have a look at one of the listings. Basically, we get you know, mapping, all that sort of stuff included. Um, there's, we also use Slideshow Pro as well. We've got a version with the Slideshow Pro. Um, so now it comes down to the plugins. So basically, um, you'll see with the widgets, we've basically got, I think there's about 56 widgets that, that you can use uh, on, your, on the website. And if you have a look at it, you can see in the home page, you can just drag and drop to have the featured listings. Um, how many featured listings do you want? What, what do you want to name them? What type of information you want to have on the featured listings? You know, whether you want to have car spaces, all that. And the click of a button, all these sort of things appear. Obviously, the more you tick, you've got to style them yourself. If you, if you tick everything, it'll probably break the page up a little bit. Um, but you'll see that, you know, there's a social widgets, there's um, property tables. There's, yeah, I think there's about 50, last, last count there was about 56 different uh, widgets you can use. Um, 
for it. So it's going a little bit overboard, but we wanted to cater for whether you wanted to have a massive real estate website or basically a simple real estate website. Um, now, how all this connects to it uh, is pretty simple. Um, we basically, every single real estate agent uh, has a, um, every single client that you add to your system has an XML code that's generated, and it basically gives you all the, all the data in XML. So basically, um, all you have to do is, is add um, the property XML for each, for each office. So if you've got an agent with 30 offices, you just add the, each one generates its own XML. Um, in Zoo Property, you just add that XML and it will then suck all the data in, team members, property data, everything, um, in, a, in a once. Uh, let's get back to the settings when you set it up, you can just add that the logo, you, as you can see there, logo width and height, what navigation menu items you want from your pages in the top little navigation, contact information, banner pics and text, and then you go through, you get down to all the, um, um, all the colour codes and stuff like that, you can pick the, you know, you can even put your own CSS and all that sort of stuff. So that's basically um, what what we've done so far. Um, what we want to have on Zoo Property by the end of, um, uh, sorry, by the middle of this year, is we want to open a theme store. Um, and the competition that we're going to that we're going to be launching, we're launching it actually, um, we're full on launching it in um, April at a WordPress in Colorado, a, work, a real estate WordPress thing. Um, and what we're going to be doing is basically giving, we haven't finally settled on the amount, but it's a minimum of five thousand US dollars to ten thousand for the best theme. But uh, that you, and we'll give the plugins away free, and then it's up to developers to come up with the best theme from that. Now, what we want to do. As part of the developer network, if you sign up as a developer on Zoo, um, as an example, if you sign up as a web developer in Boston, when someone does a search for, any real estate agent does a search for developers, your name will come up for Boston, uh, just like anybody else. Um, every client that you add, if you add a client in San Diego, your, your web development company will come up as a, as a developer for San Diego as well. Um, but what we want to do is we want to have, um, uh, we want to have a theme store so people can come in and buy it. So if, if ABC Web Design does a theme, you can, uh, a, a real estate agent can go to the website, buy the theme, and we're going to have a minimum price of 500 US dollars per theme because we want agents to get a good, uh, uh, developers to get a good enough return. They can make it 2,000 if they want 500. Um, and then what will happen is they can click on that and say they want the developer to, to also host it and, and support it or they can do it themselves, it's up to, it's up to how, how you want that to work. We want to keep the quality really high, as far as not only the looks of the themes, but also the, the, the plugins. And then we'll, so we're going to have a, a um, we're going to also introduce a verified by Zoo um, tag. So if it's, if it's, if we verify that we guarantee basically that it works. Now, as far as revenues go, um, we're going to give 70% of all the revenues on the themes back to the web developer. And then we take 30% of that um, for, for us to promote, obviously, Zoo and to work further on Zoo. Um, but for people who enter the competition, for any of the things that come through the competition, if, if their quality is high enough, then we'll put them on our theme store and you'll get, for the first two years, you get 100% of that back uh, for anyone who doesn't win the competition for, for the themes. Then obviously, the final stage will be, once we've settled down and our system's a really stable system, then we're, we're going to be introducing um, an app store as well, you know, along the same lines as what we'll see for everything else that's coming out these days. But um, we want to uh, have an app store. We already really do have it with your API. Um, one key thing about the system is we want to be, I don't know if you, many of you know Basecamp, or well, the guy who runs that, he runs a pretty top ship, and uh, I've written to him and asked him for things, and he's just told me to get left on the, on the forum, straight back. But I like that. I sort of like that he doesn't want to change his system. But he, if you want something different in the system, you build it on top yourself. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that's why we've, we've got an API with each of your clients. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll open the floor now for, for any questions. So your primary revenue base is Australia, right? At the moment, yeah. Is that where you live? No, I live here. I live in Boston. Where you manage it? We've got an office in, in Boston and an office in Australia. Yeah. So it seems to me you've got all these agents in Australia that have these various listings. Yep. And a lot of houses are, you know, are sold by an agent on one side and an agent on the other. So 
So could you give, so I, I'm, I'm one of your agents, and mm -hmm. I've got like a thousand houses listed. Yep. Could you give me the option to let other agents then show my listings, and then if the sale happens, you then get a percentage of the commission? Um, no, I don't want to get involved in the transaction. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the, the thing, in Australia works a bit differently. In America, you've got the two. If I want to buy a property, I'll go through a buyer's agent. In Australia, there's only one agent. So it's a bit, it's a, it's a fairly different marketplace. Uh, in Australia, you produce, traditionally pay about two, two and a half percent commission to an agent. But if I wanted to sell a house like through Richardson and Wrench, um, in Richardson and Wrench, uh, Seaforth, if I wanted to sell my home through through this mob here, um, I'll pay him two and a half percent commission, and that's it. Now, if someone wants to buy it, they'll go to the agent who's selling it. That's all. There's no buyers agents in Australia. Okay, so if I'm looking to buy a house. I have to, so let's assume there's about 15 agents in Carver yep. City. I have to, in essence, contact all 15 agents if I want to see all the houses for sale. Yep. Well, then you've got an opportunity to, in essence, create your own MLS. Well, the, well, another problem here in the US is the MLS system. So, so basically, we've got our themes and the way we've built it. We've also done a, a, a deal with a guy from Get Your IDX, and he's got a WordPress plugin, and you, you pay him for the amount of uh, transactions you do for each. But he covers nearly all the MLSs in America. It's just another plug-in you add to it. And we, we're going to be uh, promoting that on our website. Um, the thing is, what, what I want to do, I want to make money out of Zoo property and nothing else. I don't care about making money from apps, from themes. I want to make money from Zoo. And if anyone else wants to make money, um, we say, here's, our, here's the API. If you want to build something on top of it, I'll, I'll go for it. But I only want to concentrate on, on the listings and the exports, and that's it. And then provide the API. If someone's got a great idea, build it, and make money out of it, great. Why, why do you think there hasn't been an MLS developed in Australia? It's kind of Well, because there's not those two transactions. Because you, there's no buyer's agency involved in the transaction at all. Okay. So th there's no need. An MLS is all about having, um, because you, if, you've got, if you've got this website uh, in, in America, you can have every single listing from every single agent. But if you go to this website, see Fourth Bell Gallery, you'll only see their listings on that website, no one else's. Yeah, but if, if I'm selling my house at that business office, that means only one tenth as many people are seeing it should be seen from house. Well, everyone lists there's there's two major real estate sites in Australia and that's it. There's realestate.com to do and domain.com to do. And they're both owned, one's owned by News Limited and one's owned by Fairfax, which is the equivalent of News Limited in Australia. They're bigger than News Limited in Australia, actually. Yeah. What's the biggest thing you feel you're missing at this point? Uh, it, it's from the system, well, the one thing that I'm always talking about, well, stability is the number one thing, okay, that's, that's the number one when you've got a system. When you go from, like, just us using it to then opening up to other developers and getting uh, stability is a key. Um, Are you on a CDO? Uh, we, we, we host everything. Everything's running through, um, uh, we transferred over to, we were using Rackspace, but we had problems. Uh, we, had, we had a number of problems, they had a number of outages in their Dallas thing, so we've moved to the Amazon now. So it's all on the Amazon S3 net, uh, setup. Um, and we haven't had a problem since we've been on there. The only problem is, is that we're continually upgrading the system all the time. So we have, once a day we might be down for about five minutes once a day. Now that's not good enough you know, like, uh, for this sort of thing. The second thing, we went through three things the other day that I wanted to focus on for the next three months. Um, this number two thing is, is images. At the moment, it's a, images work fine. You upload each, you upload images. Twenty, you're allowed 26 images per property, 26 floor plans per property, one video per property, one MP3 per property. Um, the problem with the images, we do it the old way, where you upload the image one at a time. You know, click browse, and that's just. If you look at the way WordPress works now, you can just you can drag in the whole folder and just dump them in. And we wanted to get to that, but it's not massively high on the list. Um, uh, and building our exports. Um, you know, the more site, at the moment we're exporting to Google, to Zillow, to all these different sites, but we want to get one, a really strong group that, that aren't, you know, that are, that are outside the normal ones. Um, and, and the big fight will be, the big change in America is going to be the MLS systems, the way all that's run. At the moment, everyone's trying to control it. Each little, each state has got their own, they're all trying to control it. That just doesn't work these days. And if Google, I mean, Google is a perfect example, if they started, I mean, they've just started getting serious about real estate. They're running TV campaigns in Australia now for real estate, to find real estate on Google. They've got a Google real estate for Australia now. They've got one for the US, but it's a lot, a lot more expensive to get it out there uh, compared to Australia. Um, 
And if Google take control and everyone starts managing their listings from there, well then that's going to spell a lot of trouble for the analysis. So, because they make a lot of money out of it. Right? Yeah. Can you talk about pricing? So you, you mentioned the pricing of the digital Okay. How well, did you arrive at the pricing? Well, um, I suppose we looked at Basecamp and, and these sort of things and thought, well, what do we think is a fair price to charge? What can a web developer charge a real estate agent? Um, there's not many real estate agents in America I'll say that pay two hundred dollars a month. A hundred dollars a month seems to be what I'm getting at the moment. That they'll they will they will say yeah, that's fair. dollars for what? A hundred dollars a month for hosting and you know for using this system, yep. hosting the website and support. Um, but you know, it's it's how much they value it. You know, if you explain to someone what support is, that you want to be able to ring me at any time, well, you know, you're going to have to pay for that. You know, um, we're going to charge twenty nine dollars flat per office per month. Now, um, we we're not going to have it. We need to get to a thousand clients in the system to break even. You know, that's about thirty thousand US dollars a month to make the money we want to make. For instance, on so we can actually in, invest back into it. We can also um, the, the theme stores and all that sort of stuff will generate some revenue. But yeah, that's year two and year three. Um, that's pretty much twenty nine US dollars per month. Is pretty much flat. That's pretty much where we're going to make a lot of, uh, get all our like, revenue from, and that's the real cost to anybody else. At the moment, it's free. Like um, until until we get out of the you know, that, that beta stage, which we'll be in for a while, um, it'll be free. What's free? What's free? Yeah. The, if you joined up as a developer, okay. um, if you go to zooproperty.com, you sign up at the top. You join up as a developer. Um, we'll have uh, it, there's no charge. If you add clients, there's no charge. It says it says there'll be a fee, but there's, there's also it says. I'm not a web developer. I'm just a real estate broker. Yep. So. Well, it's free at the moment, but the thing is. I wouldn't advise you you, you sign up yeah. um, as a broker if you don't know how to develop anything. I, I would I would uh, talk to one of the developers here who, who could help you maybe build a website and um, and to get them and join up under their name because you know they can just add you and then they you, you can talk about your website from there. But um, the the we're, we're going to have two types of our plugin as well. We're going to have a really simplified version that just does basic listings and that's it. Then we're going to have the version you see up there right now. Can you talk a little bit about the size and longevity of your company? As a developer, people are going to be interested in jumping in on board something if there's a fairly well convinced it's going to be around for a while. Okay. How do you speak to that question? Well, I, we've, been, we've been doing it since 97, so that's 13 years or so um, doing development, um, web development. Uh, as, for, as an example, um, in Australia, uh, we're, pretty, we're pretty well established there. Um, I own a website. Uh, um, I own a website in Australia called business2.com.au, um, and I have uh, it's it's a real estate technology website. Um, pretty popular, like. Uh, mind if we down? Technology website. Um, we have Google writing on it. Um, I own the site. Uh, Google News Limited. Um, it's probably got about 10,000 subscribers to it. Um, it just talks about real estate and technology. Uh, so if you get a chance, have a look at that. Uh, we have about 20 writers that write on the site as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're a small company, so you know we're not. Uh, we don't have you know millions and millions of revenue. Per year, but we're a pretty solid company. We've been 13 years. I think we've been doing uh, real, we've been doing real estate technology for 13 years. These systems have been the, as as far as evolved systems, probably since 2004 that we've really had really strong systems. So, yeah. and as you know, I mean, if any of you are involved in SAS, I mean, when I say 30,000 break even to run a company like this, you're pretty much talking about hosting fees and wages. That's pretty much all. That's what the cost is. So. At the last year it was costing us about six grand a week um, in, in developers for the last two years. Uh, now it's you know like it's pretty minimal now. So. Yeah, uh, I walk in a bit late, so I missed the business model of this. Uh, but to speak a little bit to this question, uh, you know this is based on WordPress, so. 
so you, you know, for a year or two, you guys do go away for whatever reason. I mean, it sounds like you have a WordPress site at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that can live on its own. Okay, it does. The database, the database is built in, in um, Ruby on Rails, the system to manage the property yes. listings. Okay. It's the real estate websites that build on top of that are all in WordPress. Okay. But we're not only going to do WordPress, I mean we want to support Drupal and Joomla and all that sort of stuff, but because I've been developing websites for WordPress since it started, um, we're going to obviously provide better support for, sure. for WordPress. Okay. Hey, how long did you say you were using WordPress? I think two, when it first came out, I remember the, the first blog I wrote was for Business 2, that was in 2001, and that was using movable title. Um, 2001, 2002, movable title. And then we moved to WordPress as soon as it came out. We opened up a, a website for WordPress in um, 2002. We built, we built this thing for China Mobile uh, in 2005, um, and that's when I just thought, we, we started building a lot of stuff on top of it. I thought this can really work pretty well. It's sort of like a... Um, uh, it was a MySpace type thing for, I don't, well, Facebook wasn't around then. Um, it was a MySpace type thing for China Mobile. And we built it on WordPress. And it was basically um, a really simple type thing um, where mobile phone users could send their pictures to, to, to a website. And that's pretty much all it was. But it was pretty, we started wrapping all this stuff on top of it and thought it was pretty cool. And Moogle type was a little bit more closed back then uh, than it is now. So with all your, your WordPress experience, do you foresee any like, technical challenges or have you experienced anything, any limitations of WordPress? Or? Well, the limitations was always the, the way the pages were generated for us. Mm -hmm. Like when you wanted to, you, you, want to have a, you wanted to have a, um, a URL like um, rwm.com forward slash 69432 for a property, sure. we had to do a redirect, re we had to do a redirect basically, we had to do a, like a, a 303 page type thing wow. to get it going because WordPress generated its own ones and it didn't recognise that. So we had to do a hack to do that. We don't have to now. It's, it's changed a lot now. But that was a limitation. But see, you, you know, I mean, you've probably seen Woo themes and, and Obox design themes and all that sort of stuff. I mean, these guys are doing some really cool work. But I see like 2010, 2011 with the rise of the commercial plugins that you'll be, you know, things that you can really do really good business with. Um, and those sort of things, they're, they're just good ideas. They're not really expensive in, in, in any way. Um, I mean, if I look at sites we're doing at the moment, we're doing the national website for land.com.au in WordPress. And now that's a big website. And no one would have thought to use something like WordPress three or four years ago for something like that. You would have been talking Interwoven or Documentum or one of those sort of million dollar systems. But now it's all possible with this, you know. Um, the speed is a bit of a, I mean, I don't, every time WordPress comes out with a new thing, I just look at the speed. Um, performance more, more than anything else, and I hope they concentrate on that. The images has always been a bit of a, a bit of a thorn in their side, I think the way they have the images are handled. It's a little bit better now. Um, I think it should be easy for people to be able to, be able to manipulate images within a post, which it is now 2.9, I think, 1.9 or 2.9. So, yeah. But you'll see, I think this year we'll see a lot more. Does anyone use C-forms? Um, yeah, I don't know if he got into trouble that guy, he got thrown out or something. But he, I mean, that sort of plug-in there, for a lot of real estate clients, like for us, we've got probably 10 or 20 forms per site, you know? And we've got some of the forms doing some pretty cool things. It's all with that C forms. I mean, if he went commercial, we'd probably pay for that. And there's a few other ones that are trying to be the form, get the forms to be commercial now. But Gravity forms. Is good. Gravity forms, yeah. I don't know what's going on with there, because a lot of the Woo themes and the guy from Press 75 are all supporting that. And I sort of, I wonder why they're jumping. They really, I mean, not just, saying that they write all these articles about how cool it is. I'm just trying to wonder whether or not they've got some sort of shares in it or something. Um, but it just seems to do what C forms does. It might, it might look a little cool. With regard to selling plugins, do you see what are the challenges in the business trying to sell something that you can source this and Well, put it this way, I mean people can copy what we do, but the thing, you know, that my business partner, he's like, oh well, you know, we're gonna give away those things, we spend all this money. I said, well, who cares? I mean, we're going to make up. Our money is being made from 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 zoo property. It's not. we you know, if if a thousand people pitch our themes and six hundred of them use it for zoo clients and four hundred use it for somebody else, well, then who cares? It's six hundred. We're getting out of nothing. The big thing with it is going to be support. Um, people can pitch it, but if they're just going to install it and not know how to use it, uh, effectively, they're going to want support. So. 
but that's what you have to do. That's the downside of having a commercial um, plug-in to provide support. And I think you know, any of you guys got plugins at the moment that are on WordPress? Just, that, that you that you've made on WordPress. Because looking at the forums, the support forums, and that a lot of people expect support for even the free ones. So I can imagine that the support that we require will be a lot higher for uh, the commercial ones. Anything else? Yeah. So um, if you if you want to uh, if you want to get involved uh, with Zoo, you just go to basically Zoo Copy. There's a sign up form at the top. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, sign up there. If you're not, just go and just fill in. There's a contact form. Uh, up on the page as well. Uh, if, you're, if you're an agent, and I can either help you with the development uh, to look through a development for a website. We're doing for real estate agents. We're sort of we're doing about three or four at the moment, and you know we're pretty keen to do them. So we're we're, we're doing them pretty uh, cost effective, if you, if you if you will, because we want to basically get a few really good examples out in the US market. Um, Can you talk about the competitive marketplace, Well, we don't have any competition in in exactly what we do. There's none, but there's plenty of companies with systems, but the thing is you have to go to, if you want a website done by that company, you're using that system, you have to use that company. And that's the difference. Um, if, uh, hang on. Well, in Australia, there's a company called Hub Online, which is owned by New Zealand. Right? Now, if you want a website designed by them, uh, if you want to use their system for managing listings, you have to get your website designed by them. You, don't have, you can't say, I've got my own web developer. I don't need it, that's not going to work. And we're the only ones who are doing it that way. When you say um, developers can sign up what kind of development is it just uh, theming? Like yeah. More to it than that? No, it basically if you go through a quick process, you'll 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 join up, you'll you'll choose your subdomain that goes with agent account. You'll then log in, you'll set up your, your, your company name and all that sort of stuff, whether or not you want to be appear on the developer network on the site to say that you're, you're a willing web developer, uh, you're willing to do other people's web development. You then um, uh, you then just basically set up a client. And the way it works is real estate agents, a lot of real estate agents are just single operators, but a lot of them also have multiple offices. So the first thing you do is you set up the client, and then once you set up the client, you then set up each office. Now, if you've got, if you've got like, up a client that we've picked up, um, well, that Richardson and Wrench is a national franchise, so they've got 150 offices in Australia. We pick them up, so basically, we send them a spreadsheet, a CSV file, and then we'll just import that, and you know, um, and they're all up at once. Uh, yeah. How, what's the process for the client, the real estate agent or broker, then to keep the listings up to date? How's that work? Well, they log in and they um, update their listings. They type it in, yeah. they upload, or they type it, they just, they just fill it in like they fill in for any normal listing, and then our system then exports it to their website. Well, it's automatically happening for that, but it'll export to all the free sites that they, they're members of. Um, is, is that sort of like the IDX? Like uh, you, you take all the uh, the data from MLS, let's say Massachusetts. Yep. Let's say I have a website. Yep. You know, BostonRealEstate.com, whatever. Yep. And, and and my listings get pulled up from the MLS onto the website. That's what you do. Okay. Now. You, your list, you've got your MLS system, yes. your listings, and you've also got your own listings. Yes. If you have a look at the way the MLSs work, they're all, I mean, if you go to any, you go to Zillow.com, you look for property, some of them don't have photos, some of them hardly have any data in them. I'm not them. talking about that, I'm talking about the MLS, and that's what Massachusetts yep. uses. Yes, every single listing in Massachusetts that's on the market is in that. Yep. Can your system pull this data and put it up on the website? Okay, yeah, it does. But not our system. That's not Zoo Property. That's through a web, a, a plugin for WordPress called Get Your Ideas. Okay. And that's, that pulls in your local MLS, okay. and then your own listings also appear in a different section on your site. Oh, okay. Because the, the reason is, is that you don't want to have you don't want to have your listings all mixed with the MLS. You, with your listings, you want to show how much better you are than your competition at displaying listings for your clients on your website, rather than being mixed in with all the rest. Uh, well, actually, um, uh, I would say I would want I think would want every single listing that's out there. If they're looking, let's say somebody wants to buy a piece of real estate back then, yep. and they want to see every property from two hundred to five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. They want to see every single property. They're probably not going to be buying listings. They're probably going to be everybody in the market. 
So does it, does the system pull them all up onto your website and well, do a search? Can you I'll, do that on your I'll, website? I would argue against what you're saying there for one reason. Yeah. Is that people go to um, sites like, uh, um, I can't show you now, but Richardson and Ranch Mosman, yeah. the real estate agent has that website, not so people can search for real estate listings, because they can go to the real, the big real estate portals. They have that there so that they can get vendors yeah. to sell their listings through them. To say, hey, look at, the, look, at, look at how technologically savvy we are compared to our competition. Look at the way we display your homes compared to our competition. Right. I can guarantee you that if I, if I was a, a, a vendor and I went and have a look at some of the websites I've seen around here and also in Australia, I would just say, well, there's no chance I'm selling my property through you. <laughs> really, no, that's just a laugh. Yeah, that too. You probably look at mine that too. Well, that's what's something you've got to change. Um, but real estate agents just a laugh. And well, a, a few years ago, I tell agents now whenever they say, if they, if they walk in a room and say, oh, God, I've got no idea about technology, you know, <laughs> you know it's all you use. You know, I'd say, well, hang on a second, mate. This is your business now. If you don't know, why would I sell my house through you? Why would I buy a house through you if you've got no idea about technology? Because it's all technology now, it's not. People don't look in the window displays anymore or go to the newspapers. It's all on the web. So that excuse is just dead and buried now. Well, what I'm saying to you is, is that um, I, I have a website for real estate. Yep. I have a website. And I want consumers, I want to give them my website so that they can go on there and search. And then my face comes up and my number comes up. Yep. And what do they see property they like? They call me. That's all I want. Definitely. And I see, I see the difference in the American marketplace with that because you're, you're, you can make money out of Properties you don't have, you can make money out of everything. Yes. Yeah. But I still argue that the important thing is for you to showcase that your your technology te technological savvy yeah. to your potential vendors as well. It's just as important as the other thing. Right. Okay. Because then if you sell a property listing that you that you're that's a vendor of yours as well, that's double the money. Well, then I'll just set up one two three Main Street or you know three thirty three Commonwealth Avenue. I have a listing there. Dot com. Yeah. Put up the pictures. Put up the data, and then you know they can look at that. And yeah. That's that's what I. Typical just knowledge for a broker. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm fine with what you're, what you're saying. I'm okay. just saying you've got to think about the other things. Okay. There's a couple of other things we did I, I, should, I should mention too. Has anyone heard of the, what's that code called? The, the generates a code you can put your mobile phone over. Q, 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 QR, QR codes. Yeah, we developed a website and we automatically generate the QR codes from there as well. So you can actually, you know, um, people can scan them. It's a bit gimmicky, but it's, you know, possibly something might happen. That's like a barcode. You know, you'll see them on bus stops sometimes. Oh, you know, on the sign, that's kind of cool. Also. Yeah, yeah, signs yeah. and stuff like that, which that's what we do. Or you, you go by the, the thing and you can scan it or whatever that tells you about the property or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and same with um, like all of our all of the stuff too. We have mobile versions of everything on the WordPress as well. There's a mobile version. People can look up as well. So. Yeah. There's no other questions? Yep. So really the, the, the developer work to serve, let's say I sign up, he calls me. The part I have to do is the look and feel? Yeah, well, you, you would basically adjust the look and feel. I mean, the thing is, you've got a couple of choices. You can take a theme that we've developed, or you can build one from scratch yourself. Um, you get the API, which is basically just an XML file, an XML file of all the listings, an XML file of all the, um, of the, all the offices. So when you, you, when you add a client, you generate an XML, uh, a, an API for them, and then when each office ha also has their own individual one. Because sometimes you might want to have a different website for each different office. Um, and sometimes you want to have one for all of them. So one will have carry all the data. Uh, and I think we allow uh, we allow real-time calling of that data at any time through the XML. We don't allow to get you to hook into the database and grab the data. You just get it through the XML. So is there support uh, required to the broker on anything besides the looking field? Are there data issues and uploads and well, else? The, the, as a developer in the system, you support your clients underneath that. We support you above that. So if you need help with anything, so it goes up a level. We don't want to deal with the agents. That's, if they're your clients, they're your clients. We well, you don't want us dealing with the movement, so. Right. so the reason I had to say, you might tell me, developer who had access to the database. Yeah. Access, yes, no, yeah. Files. Yeah. So you said that there was like sort of a schedule that was going to be updated daily, or? Well, it's in real time. They're basically getting updated. When any change is made in the system, calls the database to update the XML. So if anyone changes a, a team member, some property data, changes the price or something, it gets updated, the XML pretty much gets updated on the call. So yeah, uh, so, yeah it's, um, there, there's going to be things down the track that we're going to, the first couple of years we're not going to allow any 
read access to the database at first, and then slowly, once we're more comfortable, we've got revenues to have people that can, can take care of that and look after and make sure that um, the security there is fine. We'll, we'll, allow, we'll allow certain things, you know, eventually might even allow writing to the database as well, which is something in America we're probably going to have to do at some stage, with them so you can suck MLS data in as well. Um, we're, currently we're working with, we've got up and running with salesforce.com, so we've got a, that, I, that API actually um, sends data when people make an inquiry through the WordPress, when they make an inquiry on a, on a website, it, uh, for people who have uh, salesforce.com, where it also enters that data into salesforce.com for the agent as well. So we're doing little things like that. That's probably going to be the, the CRM is probably going to be the one big thing that people are going to want to put their data into. So. When, it gets, when it comes around to having your theme shop and all of that, do you Well, that's where it comes. It, it comes down to you what you want to, how much you want to do. If you just want to have a basic website, you only have to have a basic website. The plugins are there to say if you want to do all this stuff, it's all there for you. But what we will have, and what we're doing, what I've got my developers doing at the moment, is just to make a simplified plugin, um, uh, the, the bare bones. So it'll have a search box, and you can search for property types, you know, price, all that sort of stuff, and then we'll generate a, a list, and then you can click on that and it'll go to a property. So that, that's going to be a really simple one, which which will be a one plug install. At the moment, unfortunately, we've found it, but um, I think at the moment there's about 25 plugins that we've got. Um, and we want to keep them separate for our point of view, because it's easy to update. Um, it's easy to, if there's something wrong with one of them, we can just go to that one plugin and update it, and then send an update to everybody to say that one's uh, written the update. Yeah, I would assume the way it works, and I've never actually had clients that but I, I would think that if I was a web developer, which I have been for an agent comes to me and they just want to website. I say, okay, and so I know about your system, I'm not going to tell them about it because I'm not going to be able to get Yep. Okay. So I charge them, you know, four grand or whatever, put the base inside. I say, I'm going to give you the basic stuff for four grand, and there it is. And then he'll, and then he'll call up, you know, a month later and say, well, I really would like blah, 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 blah. And then he says, okay, that's fine, that's another 500 bucks. So basically, over time, mm -hmm. a lot of these people, their needs are going to evolve, and they're going to want yep. fancy, fancy stuff. And they're going to call you because they probably don't understand themselves, and they, they they probably don't want to go to another web developer because he doesn't know what the hell's going on. And besides, I control right. it. So I assume that basically, just over time, people's needs evolve and become more sophisticated and go over the same charge. Yeah, well, put it this way: we charge like in a, just what we can charge in Australia is completely. I mean, we're doing uh, we do websites, you know, but that the Richardson and Rich Mosman, which you didn't see there, that was the that, that one we charged thirty thousand dollars for. You know, we, we get, it's everything, websites are everything for agents in Australia. Um, but we also do websites for two, three thousand dollars, you know, when they just basically say, oh, look, all I want is this. What you have, the key to the key to it is, is you build them. If they want something outside of what the norm is, you've got to build them for them. You've got to, you've got to charge them because otherwise you just end up, and I've done it before. I mean, my business partner is a lot stricter than what I am. He basically, every time they want something changed, he, he builds them. Unless, of course, they're a good client. Um, you know, I've got one client, um, we, we always laugh about this guy because he, I, don't, I don't want him as a client. I haven't wanted him for five years. Um, and he just keeps asking for stuff and I just keep, I know that he's going to come back to me and say, half price. So if I say $500, he's going to say, I'll do it for 250 and you can do it. You know, if you do it for 250 so I'll just say, oh, I'll just double it every time. Play, play his stupid little game, you know. <laughs> if he was just normal, like I'd just give him the normal fee, but I just know the way he plays normal. Um, but yeah, so most of the time we, we're pretty, um, we're, we've got a, if it's just a little bug fix or a little, bug fixes we always do free, but if it's just a little update or something, more than likely we won't charge, but if it's something that takes more than an hour, we'll always go. And, you know, we rarely have any problems with that, so. I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it there, and um, if you've got any more questions, just come up and ask me personally. Okay, thank you very much.